Excuse me. Good evening. This is Real Railroads, Episode 4, Forming the Class 1s of North America, Part 2. The BNSF Railway, known for its orange locomotives that are seen all over North America, started when predecessor Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy absorbed the Burlington, Missouri River Railroad in 1872. On September 7, 1876, the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad was split up, with part of it becoming the St. Louis and San Francisco Railroad. In 1886, the ATSF gained control of the Gulf, Colorado, and Santa Fe Railway. In 1890, a lot of things happened to the Midwest and Rocky Mountain Railroad scene. The SOSF and the Colorado Midland Railway came under the control of the Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe. On February 1st, several rail lines consolidated to form the Great Northern Railway, and the same year, the Colorado Central Railroad and Cheyenne and Northern Railway merged to form UP subsidiary Union Pacific Denver and Gulf Railway. In 1893, the bankrupt UP cast off the, D, the UP D&G, which in 1898 merged with the Denver, Lunderville, and Gunnison Railway to form the, Chicago, the Colorado and Southern Railway. In 1899, the CNS acquired the Fort Worth and Denver as a subsidiary. By 1900, the CNS had absorbed 12 other Colorado area railroads to form a larger railroad. Meanwhile, that year, UP, N, NP, and GN, Northern Pacific and Great Northern, each had acquired 48.5% of the stock of the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy to gain access to Chicago. These three railroads would try multiple times to merge, but were unsuccessful. In 1905, the Portland and Seattle Railway was formed by the GN and NP railroads, to compete with UP for Oregon lumber traffic. This became the Spokane, Portland, and Seattle on Janu in January of 1908. That same year, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy acquired the Colorado and Southern. In 1910, the SPNS acquired the Oregon Electric, an interurban railway that had been owned by SPNS parent Great Northern. The SLSF went through its second reorganization after the 1895 sale by ATSF, becoming the St. Louis Dash San Francisco Railway on August. 14, 1916. In 1928, Santa Fe sold their share of the Northwestern Pacific to partner Southern Pacific and purchase the Kansas City, Mexico, and Orient Railways is U.S. trackage. The Northwestern Pacific will come, with the U will come again with the UP uh, description. CB&Q, A.K. the Burlington, long a major player in Chicago commuter rail, formed the bus company Burlington Transportation Company in 1929. This would merge with other bus companies in 1936 to form Trailways Transportation System, and today is Burlington Trailways. In 1960, the Santa Fe purchased the Toledo Peorian Western Railroad, selling half interest to the Pennsylvania. Meanwhile, the GN, NP, and CB&Q once again talked mer talk merger, proposing the Great Northern Pacific and Burlington Lines. That was a mouthful for you. Longer than BNSF. This attempt didn't come to fruition. On March 2, 1970, Though a major merger took place. Northern Pacific Railway, 8,368 mile Great Northern, 922 mile Spokane, Portland, and Seattle, and 8,538 mile Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy merged to form Burlington Northern Railroad. CB&Q subsidiary Colorado and Southern became a subsidiary of the BN, while Fort Worth and Denver remained a subsidiary of the CNS. Wonderful corporate structures here. You get more of this type of thing. As part of the merger, 900 miles of the Northern Pacific was spun off to form Class 1 Railroad Montana Rail Link. Two years later, the BN would enter the Powder River Basin with just a single track. Now it's four tracks. And more. On November 21, 1980, the St. Louis-San Francisco Railway, a.k.a. Frisco, was merged into Burlington Northern, followed by the 708-mile Colorado and Southern, on December 31, 1981, and 1,362 mile Fort Worth and Denver on December 31, 1982. The next year, the Toledo Peoria and Western was merged into Santa Fe, and on December 23, all holdings of Santa Fe Industries and Southern Pacific Transportation Company were placed with a new company, Santa Fe Southern Pacific Corporation. This was because the ATSF and Southern Pacific had every intention of merging. They even started painting their locomotives into what is called the Kodachrome scheme for Kodak's Kodachrome, which was red and yellow, same, co same colors. There was only one locomotive that was painted in full SPSF livery, 
and that was only done for a couple hours, like a couple hours to take some photos, publicity photos, and then it was repainted back. I did not get out the magazine that showed that said when it had repainted. I should have. But all the other, all the locomotives were either SP or SF, and they were in, just intended in adding the other letters after the merger went through. The ICC denied it due to that it would recreate too many uh, duplicate routes. Southern Pacific was sold to Rio Grande Industries, and Santa Fe continued to be owned by Santa Fe Pacific Corporation. They just dropped the Southern. And I'm getting just lottery tickets stick into my elbow all the time. In 1989, the Santa Fe sold the TPNW, making an independent railroad again. Sort of. Um, it became associated with New York, Susquehanna, and Western, and uh, today it is now uh, owned by Genesee and Wyoming. On September 22, 1995, Burlington Northern Incorporated and Santa Fe Pacific Corporation merged to form Burlington Northern and Santa Fe Corporation. But their holdings, Burlington Northern Railroad and Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway, remained separate railroads while they made the railroads compatible. They had uh, different signaling. Uh, I believe it was Santa Fe that wasn't uh, Union. I didn't put that in here. They were. They had two major things that they weren't compatible, and they had to change that. On December 31st, 1996, 13,115 mile Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railway, then the smallest class one in the West, and 27,000 mile Burlington Northern Railroad, the largest, largest in the West, merged to form Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway. Today, the BNSF railway system employs 41,000 people on 30. 2,500 miles of track in 28 states with a fleet of over 8,000 locomotives in various paint from pre-merger railroads. Cascade or the, the executive, uh, Cascade Green or the executive paint scheme, the dark green and cream, and war bonnet paint through the latest orange and black with BNSF swoosh. It is owned by BNSF LLC, which is in turn owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. Then we have the first merger that created today's 32,200-mile Union Pacific Railroad happened in 1870, when the Central Pacific Railroad acquired the original Missouri Pacific. The second came in 1885, when the Central Pacific Railroad merged into the Southern Pacific Railroad. During the mid and late 1800s, six railroads merged to form the Chicago Northwestern Railway. These mergers were followed by another merger of two predecessors to UP. The Denver Rio Grande absorbed the Denver Rio Grande Western, in 1901, but the name became the Denver Rio Grande Western later. Excuse me. Getting thirsty. The next step towards the modern UP came when the Southern Pacific and the Santa Fe merged 42 railroads into the Northwestern Pacific Railroad in 1906, followed by the December 1911 formation of the 1,331 mile Southern Pacific Railroad of Mexico out of two leased railroads. These were followed on May 12, 1917, when a former Jay Gould company, the New Missouri Pacific, absorbed another piece of Jay Gould's former empire, the St. Louis Iron Mountain and Southern, and I believe it was 1921 that the MP created the Missouri-Illinois Railroad, which was a 200-mile railroad with a ferry service across the Mississippi River. More change to Western railroading came in 1924, when the Southern Pacific purchased the El Paso and Southwestern Railroad and kept it a subsidiary. Meanwhile, the Missouri Pacific acquired the Gulf Coast, li acquired Gulf Coast Lines and began operating the Short Line Holding Company's assets on January 1, 1925. In 1928, the MOPAC took control of the Texas and Pacific, but kept it as its in independent subsidiary for the time being. In 1929, the Santa Fe sold SP their portion of the Northwestern Pacific, making it a sole SP property. This remains as a commuter line today. The DNRGW purchased the Denver and Salt Lake Railroad in 1931. This set the stage for their operating the Moffat Tunnel. Next comes 1932, and Jason will recognize this year. The year the St. Louis Southwestern, a.k.a. Cotton Belt, became a Southern Pacific subsidiary. It would remain so for 60 years.
On March 3rd, 1947, the Denver and Salt Lake was officially merged into DNRGW. This was followed by UP selling the Mexican trackage to the government of Mexico in 1951. They then fully absorbed the El Paso and Southwestern in 1955, while the Gulf Coast Line, still a subsidiary of MP, were officially merged into MP and ceased to exist on March 1st, 1956. The following acquisition was by another future piece of UP. The Chicago Northwestern gained control of the Chicago, St. Paul, Minneapolis, and Omaha on January 1, 1957. It would merge into the CNW in 1972, followed by the absorption of the 1,500-mile Minneapolis and St. Louis Railway on November 1, 1960. This ended two competitors of the CNW. In 1964, MP, Missouri Pacific subsidiary, Texas and Pacific, acquired the Midland Valley Railroad and Kansas, Oklahoma, and Gulf Railway. These were completely merged in the TNP in 1967 and 1970, respectively. In May 1967, the Missouri Pacific and Louisville and Nashville jointly gained control of the Chicago and Eastern Illinois. On July 1, 1968, the Chicago Great Western merged in the Chicago Northwestern, eliminating yet another one of CNNW's competitors. That same year, CNNW purchased the Alton and Southern jointly with the Missouri Pacific. In 1972, the Cotton Belt became 50% owner of the Elton Southern after purchasing CNW's share. This was followed by October 15, 1976, merging of Missouri Pacific subsidiary Texas and Pacific into its parent Missouri Pacific, and that same year, the Chicago and Eastern Illinois was merged into MP as well. The Western Railroads were shrinking at this time with just MP, UP, WP, CNW, DNRGW, MKT, CRINP, SSW, UP, SSWSP and SP, remaining of what would become today's Union Pacific, and the SSW was a subsidiary of the SP and had been for over 40 years. 1978 saw the merging of Missouri Illinois Railroad into the MP. The Midwest Railroad map changed drastically when another major railroad ceased operations in 1980. On March 31, 1980, the Chicago, Rock Island, and Pacific, along a money drain, ceased to operate after trying unsuccessfully to merge with the UP. With no one wanting it, it was split up among eight railroads in one company. These included the Union Pacific, Chicago Northwestern, Southern Pacific, and Missouri-Kansas-Texas. Another couple major changes occurred in 1982 when the Union Pacific purchased the Western Pacific, and then the Missouri Pacific on December 22nd of the same year. At this time, the Missouri Pacific was a highly successful railroad. Over 11,000 miles, it had more infrastructure than UP did, with more locomotives, roughly 1,500, and most, if not all, locomotives were under 10 years old. It also gave UP 50% control over the Alton and Southern. This purchase revamped UP, even though it both remained subsidiaries for a time. They both. Not yet both. There. All MP power was in armor yellow with MP lettering by 1994. On January 11, 1983, the Western Pacific was merged in the Union Pacific on June 20th, the CNNW started operating their 600-mile piece of the Rock Island. In 1988, two things happened. Rio Grande Industries, owner of the DNRGW, purchased Southern Pacific Transportation Company, owner of SP, who owned SSW and half of ANS. The name was changed to Southern Pacific Rail Corporation because it was a more known name. On August 12th, the Missouri Pacific and its owner, Union Pacific, purchased Missouri, Kansas, Texas, and on December 1st, 1989, merged the MKT into the Missouri Pacific. By 1990, the map had changed even more with SSW and ANS associated with Southern Pacific, which along with Rio Grande was controlled by Southern Pacific Rail Corp. Chicago Northwestern was going through multiple owners, which maybe someday I'll go into, but it's very confusing. Google it. Missouri Pacific was a subsidiary of UP and owned half of the ANS was USP subsidiary SSW. This changed yet again in 1992 when the St. Louis Southwestern officially ceased to exist, merged into the Southern Pacific, putting ANS as a subsidiary of SP and, N and, and MP. A lot of P's in here. In April 1995, the Chicago Northwestern was purchased by the UP, but it still is a subsidiary of Union Pacific with no motive power of its own anymore. On September 11, 1996, the Southern Pacific Rio Grande system became property of the Union Pacific. The main reason for this merger was the creation of Burlington Northern and Santa Fe. Union Pacific likely wouldn't have been able to compete with BNSF without the SP DRGW, even though as soon as they had that property, they closed one of the DRGW's lines, Tennessee Pass. 
On January 1, 1997, came the final two merger. This was the Missouri Pacific officially being absorbed by Union Pacific. It took 14 years due to outstanding bonds. This concludes Part 2. I'm going to have to do Part 3, which will be Canadian National and Canadian Pacific. This has run way too long. I figured it would probably be a three-part series. So stay tuned for Episode 5, which I will film at a later date. Bye.